नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम I just talked about the measurement, which is probabilistic, in the sense that you take a large number of identically prepared systems, and then if you want to measure a specific energy E n, then the value will be mod C n squared, which is what is the probability for finding the energy E n. Right? Everybody is there. That's where we kind of stopped. So recall the definition of psi. You just insert. An identity operator, which is in parentheses here, on the same side, and then the coefficient c n is nothing but the inner product of pi n with psi. Everybody with me? We did this. Okay. So then, if you want to find the expectation value of a system prepared in a state psi, then Hamiltonian expectation value of the energy, and it will be weighted average. That mod C n squared is the probability for this energy E n to be measured, and so on. So you sum it over, and that will give you the average. So what have you learned in classical mechanics? You have a phase space. Phase space is defined by position and momentum, right? And then you have dynamical variables, which I call it as capital A, capital B, which are functions of this x and t. Then, if you want to know the time evolution, Hamiltonian helps to find the time evolution. Plus them. What are those equations? First, you need to write the Poisson bracket of A and B, which is governed by the Poisson bracket of X and T theory. You all know Poisson bracket, right? Okay. The definition of a Poisson bracket of two variables in a phase space defined by X and T. Involves these partial derivatives in this fashion. So that's the definition. If you want to find what is the Poisson bracket of x and p here, so del x by del x is one, del p by del p is one. Del x by del p is zero, del p by del x is zero. So it is just one. So I'm just trying to bring in some kind of a correspondence between a Poisson bracket which is learnt in classical mechanics with commutator. In quantum mechanics, that's the main motivation why I'm going and comparing and contrasting classical mechanics with quantum mechanics. Okay, so this is the formal definition of this Poisson bracket. An evolution equation depends on the Hamiltonian, and you can write x dot dx by dt involving the partial derivative of the Hamilton. Hamiltonian is also a dynamical variable which is dependent on x and p. So you will have an equation which gives you the time evolution of the position coordinate. Another equation which gives you the time evolution of the momentum. Right? What are these equations called? Hamilton's equations. Okay. So these two equations in classical mechanics. This one is called Poisson bracket, and uh, these two equations which I have written, which gives you the evolution in phase space. Time evolution. They are called Hamilton equations. So now we want to see an analogy to quantum physics. So you clearly see that here the phase space time evolution is governed by some equation. We also want to write the state vector which we write in quantum mechanics to be governed by some equation. That is one. And what will be the analog of Poisson bracket when you go to quantum mechanics? So those are the questions you can ask. And uh, So the first thing is all the dynamical variables. Example, your Hamiltonian and other operators which are functions of x and p, they get promoted to become operators in Hilbert space. To be more precise, you can take linear operators in Hilbert. Poisson bracket, which we had, you can replace that by a commutator bracket. What is a commutator bracket? A commutator of a comma b 
एस ए बी माइनस बी A and B are Hermitian operators. Let's take them to be corresponding to observables. Its commutator. When you do the commutator, what happens? So suppose I want to find the dagger of this. Someone, what is this? So D dagger, sorry, D A minus A B. Is that right? That is nothing but minus of commutator of A with B. So something bothering us. If we have two observables which are Hermitian operators, the commutator is not a Hermitian operator, right? If you want to make it Hermitian, what do we do? Suppose I call this to be C operator, then it is not Hermitian. What do I do? Yes, multiply by an i, and then this dagger that i will also get in here. So minus i, so you will get this to be again an i. So this is the. These are the reasons why you will have an i here because your left hand side. Is not going to be Hermitian. If you want to make both left hand side and right hand side to match, you put an I factor. Why a hedge clause? Why do you need a hedge clause? By dimensional arguments, the Planck constant is the relevant one for the product of extension, which you can integrate. Okay. So this is one naive way of arguing. Why it is postulated that the Poisson bracket goes to commutator bracket, and the commutator bracket is I have drawn by that. You are done for a finite dimensional Hilbert space. Is that right? You prove this for a finite dimensional. But if you have a commutator of A with B, as I times C. What happens? So C, in, in fact, here is an identity operator, right? So if I take x operator with p operator, let's do one dimensional. That will be I x cross identity operator. In general, it could be an infinite dimensional space. If I take the trace on both sides, what will the left hand side be? Left hand side is Zero by this property, is that correct? Then what is the problem? Continue. Is this allowed? This contradicts. Left hand side is not equal to right hand side, right? So which means this identity is valid only for finite dimensional universe. That's the only way you can try and say that this is in the infinite dimensional vector space. You cannot have this. In general, if you have an AB commutator as I C, you have to impose what? Even in the finite dimensional Hilbert space, if this side is zero, this should be traceless matrix. Okay, right? If I want this, take trace. If this is zero. This implies C is traceless in finite dimensional Hilbert space, but in infinite dimensional Hilbert space, this property cannot be satisfied because we can't give a matrix representation, even though we can write a Dirac bracket notation. You cannot write a matrix representation to argue. That trace A B is equal to trace B A in an infinite dimensional space. So that's just a. There's also something else we could do. Delta A is your standard deviation of an operator A. What is the formal definition? We saw this in one of the lectures. What 
what is delta A? It is the expectation value of A squared minus expectation value of A, the whole squared. And then you take the square. So for some dynamical variable or some operator, the standard deviation is given this way. Product of two, this is what we call it as an uncertainty in A. Standard deviation is what we call it as an uncertainty in the observable corresponding to the operator A times the uncertainty in B. It can be proven that this is going to satisfy. It's going to be related to the commutator bracket. The commutator was 0, then what does it mean? What does Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tell you? You always write delta A, delta B is greater than or equal to H cross by 2 or something, right? What does that mean? Delta X, delta P, when you write. You say that if you can precisely look for the position, which is delta X, your delta P will be very large, right? So, this is what is, you cannot simultaneously measure X and P. If the commutator of A and B is 0, then delta A, delta B is 0. So, you can simultaneously measure both of them with precision if the comm commutator is 0. So, XP commutator is what? XP commutator is non-zero. So, because XP commutator is non-zero, you don't have, you have an uncertainty principle, which is your familiar Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. In general, if two operators are commuting, that is this one is zero, then you can show that those two can be simultaneously measured. Is that clear? There is no uncertainty that measuring one will not give you precise value for the other one. This we will prove in one of the videos. Okay. So, hence non-zero commutator of two operators will imply uncertainty principle. And we can say one is precisely measurable, the other one may not be precisely measurable. So, these are some things which you can play around. This I already said, if you take the conjugate and transpose of two operators, what we showed that the commutator of A comma B is same as negative of commutator of A comma B dash. Right? So, it is not Hermitian. To make it Hermitian, we introduce an I. For XP commutator, you need a dimensionless constant. The commutator, whatever is the dimension, you have to introduce Planck constant so that the both sides dimensions are known. And some of the interesting properties of the commutators, which one of the things which you should remember, if you remember when I was saying the properties of operators on the linear vector space, linear operators, the order matters. The order matters. You can't say whether I call AB and BA are one and the same. A, B is different from B, A in general. When will it be same? When the commutator of A with B is 0, then you, the order will not matter or you can measure this or that in whichever order. Right? So, you need to keep track that you can't violate the order. So, if A, B, C, D is the order, I first do the expansion of this side, I take the A out and B commutator with C D and then this one, I keep the A, but since this one should be the order as A B, the B should come this side. B cannot be here, which you can do in your classical mechanics, but in quantum mechanics, the A will be to the left. B will be to the right. Okay. And what else can we do? We can further do the CD also the same way. 
So C D also if you do it, what happens? C comes to the left and D goes to the right. Okay. So it will become A C with B and D. And you can also write A with B C coming to dinner and D this side. These are the two terms that you will get from this term. And similarly the other two terms you will get from one way in which you could do is you can expand this as a b c d minus c d a b right you could do that and you can also verify that i can write this as a times B with C D plus A times C D sorry A times C D and then put the B here, right? This one. And you can explicitly write this further as A C times B D. This term will allow one more term which is A with B C times D. Similarly this term, this term will be A with C B D plus a with B, B, where will the C go? In the left. Is this clear? Is the pattern clear to you? This is the way to play around with the commutator bracket when you have products of operators. Okay. Suppose I give you X squared commutator with P squared. How will we do that? x squared commutator with p squared. Now there is one more thing you can use here. x with x, there is no order. Right? You can use that fact. The commutator of x with x is 0. So if this is not a, b, it is not two different operators, the same operators. So how will we write this? We can write this as x with x p squared plus x with p squared x. And then what do we do? So that is x hat with x p hat with p hat plus x hat p hat sorry x hat p hat x hat with p hat ok that is the first term the second term will be x with p hat with p hat x hat plus p hat x hat p hat x hat and now you use x p to be i h cross right I am doing it in one dimension what is the simplification finally x p twice x p and then Twice xp with this one will be px, right? Twice px. I h cross. That's it. So there's something which you see here, the beauty. What is happening? This xp with p h px should have the property that it is Hermitian, right? In that day I was telling you that the order matters, 
And whenever I have to write a Hermitian operator, so this should be I've taken A with B as C, the C should be same as C dagger. Right? And uh, you can verify that if you take this operator, two factor anyway, we let's not worry. If you take XP with PX and take the dagger of it, it will be same as, this will become PX plus XP, which is same. And we didn't do anything, we just used the commutative property. And we see that it always comes as a symmetric combination, which I was trying to insist last time. That in quantum mechanics, because the order matters, when you have a dot product of two operators, you first write that as AB plus BA. Remember? And I said that is what is the Hermitian quantity. If you had a cross product of two operators, so we find x squared plus c squared to be 2i x cross plus xp plus px. So this is Hermitian. I'm just trying to say that if you have a dot b as operators, even in three dimension. You have to, it is not same as B dot A which you are familiar in your classical physics. This when you go to quantum physics, this is classical. Quantum, you have to make it Hermitian, which means A dot B plus B dot A divided by 2. Is this Hermitian? If you just took A dot B, is it Hermitian? Further. Why? Because A dot B dagger is B dot A. A is Hermitian and B is Hermitian, but A dot B is not Hermitian. It goes to a new operator. Whereas this one, A dot B goes to B dot A and B dot A goes to A dot B. So that is a Hermitian. So and comes naturally in the commutator brackets. I didn't do anything using the properties of commutator, I end up getting combination of xp plus px naturally. I didn't get just xp. Okay? So, the order really matters and you have to be careful with the order. So, just to reflash that slide. So, the last where the ordering is done is the one which will help us to find the commutators of any products of objects. Let me stop here.